you this afternoon. I would like to show you this. Um, I have some stack of seats. <coughs> and if you would like to get one of these, just kind of meet me after the service. And then I'll leave some on the back table there for you to pick up later on. Um, and then if you need to contact me later on or you're coming to Peru for a visit or whatever, of course, of, of course you're welcome at any time. But to get in contact with me for whatever reason, the contact information is there on the prayer card. I kind of feel at home here. I grew up in that church, starting from the age of age 10 until 18. Went to college, 2008, graduated, 2012, and then went back to church there. I really, when I was in college, I, uh, I got involved with that ministry, and I always wondered, Lord, is this something that you would want me to be involved with? Should I go back? I've always felt God convicted me about going back, but there were some other options. Should I do this? The college had invited me to do uh, some teaching for them, teaching for English. I could do that. Um, they talked about maybe my working with the technological department and helping there at the school. And I thought I could do that. But always in the back of my mind, Peru has been there, and the need, and those kids, people to preach and teach, and God has always spoken to me about that. And so I graduated in 2012 and got in contact with different people, and I thought, you know what, I need to just go back. I had put it off a little bit, I thought I'd work a little bit, I'll do a few things. And God said, no, 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 I need you back there as soon as possible. And so, Went back to living with mom and dad again and uh, teaching there at school, the Christian Day School, sixth grade. Uh, from 12, from grade 12 through grade, uh, from grade 9 through grade 12, all the different, 12 to 19, 12 to 19 I'm sorry, all in one grade. So I had 14, 15, 16. 17-year-olds all the way up to 19-year-olds in one class. Very interesting. All the different levels that they have. Some of them, when they start school, they're 10 years of age when they start, and so you've got to catch them up. And then they have some other issues, of course. Sometimes they're called deaf plus individuals. And so, but most of them are just deaf. That's it. And I enjoyed my time there, that opportunity to teach these young people and to be part of their lives. Here's what we would do each morning when it comes time for class. They would line up in formation, and then they would go into class and sit down. And first thing we do is open the Word of God, and we have a devotional. We did this every day, every morning. And so there was a particular theme, let's say we did Matthew's own chapter, we were open to that particular passage, and each one would go around and they'd sign their verse. And they will sign their verse. And sometimes it's a word because you know we they speak Spanish or Spanish is written there. And there's a word that I don't know what that means, and so they would spell it out. And then I would look that up, give them the meaning for the word. Sometimes I didn't know, so I had to go to the dictionary before I could give them the word. And then after that, we would do an application of the verse to our lives. So maybe eight, ten verses would go around the room. And then I would explain that it took time, it took about 45 minutes for us to do this. But we did some Bible study during class in the morning. And that was a good opportunity for them. I enjoy watching them grow and learning the things of God. And perhaps God will use them in the, pre the future as the preachers and teachers. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to have strong Bible knowledge. And um, 
there's a definition for the Jehovah's Witness there. There are other groups there in Peru as well. Uh, Pentecostal, there's a group there. Not the same as before. But before it was just Werner Miller and the work that he was doing. And then they are not understanding what the meaning of the word truth is. What is truth? The deaf people are very confused as to what is truth. So often we have to take them back to the word of God. Take them right back there. This is truth. And so we've been learning the word of God. So that they can be established. Not well, well you know, they said, well, Vernon told me. I remember. Brother Joe told me. I remember. No, the word of God told me this. Jesus is the one that said this to me. And so I can stand on the word as my foundation and stand firmly. I like the sign just recently. Um, they were doing the song during the singing time this morning, and he signed this sign. I like that word. What does it mean? You have a foundation that is solid like a rock. Jesus is often compared to a rock. A rock is unmovable. Other things around it may move. Other religions, things have changed, they are moving. But the foundation of Jesus Christ is solid as a rock. He never changes. And I thank God for that, amen? I'm excited about that. I want to share a little bit more, and then I'd like to preach for you this afternoon. I want to share a little bit about my fiancé. As I said this morning, her name is Zulema. She's 24 years old. And she'll be, actually she'll be 24 in December. Her mom and dad are deaf. And let me give you a little bit of that. Back in the day when Vernon would go to Peru. From America, he would fly there. I first remember the story, he went to Jamaica first and then started the ministry in Peru afterwards. It was a very frustrating time. There was really nobody interested in what he was trying to do. How do you reach out? To deaf people. You go, you try to say, hey, do you have anybody here that's deaf? They weren't interested. And many of the deaf people were hidden. They were not, you know, out on the streets and so on. Sometimes you see them begging every now and then, but um, they would be at the dump. I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a Peruvian influence there with my signing. They would pick up things from the dump. <coughs> but no one really was interested in the things of God. And it was a very frustrating time for Vernon. He would go to other missionaries. I don't know if you guys know Brother Tom Pace, friend of the ministry down there. And he was an encouragement and a help and had gave advice to Vernon. I think right now that ministry has been there for quite a long time. But Tom Pace is the pastor there. And uh, he's further went to him and said, I'm just frustrated, nothing is happening. You know, how, what am I supposed to do? And he said, easy, easy answer. There's no easy answer for that. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. When there's no answer, guys, what do you do? You go to the Lord. There's always an answer there with him. Other person can try and say, well, you know, um, maybe you could find another place that's easier to work than here. Or maybe you really need to change something about your presentation. You know, sometimes we can have an idea, but if you really want to an answer, you just go to the Lord. Lord, I'm looking to you to work. I need your hands to be on this ministry, not my doing, but you. And so that's what Vernon did. Vernon and Brother Pace got on their knees right there in the office. This is a story that they told me back in their office right there and then. And pray, God, please, we don't know what to do. 
if you do that need to know about you, they are here, but we don't know how to communicate, how to reach them. It is so frustrating. We want to start a school, but we can. We want to start a church, but they won't come. All at the same time, things started to happen. I mean, real true story. At the same time, there was a knock on the door. While they're praying, and Brother Tom Case, they're at his house. His office is at, at his home, by the way. Uh, he goes to the door, yes. And it's a lady. She says, I have a friend that has two small deaf children. Oh, really? We don't know what to do with them. How do I teach them? How do I communicate with them? Wow, guys. Vernon is there. He's like, um, let me explain. That's the reason why I'm here. I'd like to teach your kids. Yeah. And they started the school just with those two kids and Vernon going and meeting with them. And they slowly grew. God bless. Those kids grew up became Christians, became witnesses to the gospel of Christ. And so now today, my fiance, Sulema, her dad was one of those young dead boys that has now turned into a man, had a daughter, and that's my fiance. Somebody in Florida made the decision to say, you know what? I want to reach deaf people in another country. Went to Jamaica first, then went to Peru to work there, was very frustrated. Could have quit. They could have. But just went to the and says, How do I do this? How do I reach them? God created a way. And I thank God for that man. I thank God for him, for all that he did in bringing this work to pass. Amen. True story. Open the word of God with me, if you don't mind. This is Ephesians chapter 2. And I do want to thank those that are in the sound room upstairs for assisting me in putting this PowerPoint together. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Let's read this together. It says here, Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Stop right there. Right there. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. We thank you so much for the opportunity to come to your house and the fellowship with fellow Christians. Lord, you loved us. We ask for your help now at this time. We are part of your family, so I'm asking for your help. For your words, not mine, not my ideas, but for your word alone to go forth. And I ask it in your name. Amen. Like I was just talking about, we were, we were girlfriend, boyfriends before, but then you are now engaged there in Peru. Not a citizen. This is, that's a problem, right? In order for her to be able to come, she cannot. My sister, when she got married, she got married in February. February of this year. Asked Selena to be part of the wedding as maid of honor. Come on over. I need for you to come to the wedding. The visa, we applied for it and she was denied for a visa. The government said no. We thought, 
She has to stay in Peru. She watched the wedding online. Wept a little bit. She says, I wish I could have been there. There was a couple of other girls that also wanted to be part of it, and they could not as well. Why is that? Because they're not citizens. It's not a decision that they get to make for themselves. They have to, but you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a friend that's there, and um, you know, how about the fact that, you know, we're all part of the same earth, you know, surely there should be some unity among, no, you don't belong to this country. So therefore, as a result of that, I can deny you entrance. <coughs> and so they did. The government does have the right to say, no, you cannot come in. Oh, they do have the right to say, yes, you can come in, you're granted entrance. In Peru, when I go there, I have to ask permission first. That's what a visa is. I have to ask them, can I come? I can come for six months, they tell me. So I go for six months. And then I have to do the paperwork and all the processing and so forth. And I stay a little bit extra time? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, just a little bit extra. You have to be careful. Maybe one day they'll say, no, you can't come anymore. We don't want missionaries here. You have to leave. Um, we're, we're, we're friends with Russia now, and um, America, this is our day sign for American. And America, um, they're at war with us, so we decided we don't want you as part of this country anymore. They could do that. I don't want to be a foreigner. Is that your sign? Foreigner, foreigner. I don't want to be a foreigner. I don't want to be an outsider. I want my wife, I don't want her to be a foreigner. I, know I want her and I to be able to go back and forth. So we're going to have to start the paperwork to have dual citizenship. Her and I. I want her to become an American citizen and I will become a Peruvian citizen. We'll have no hindrances, no problem with the government. I'll be able to go into Peru. I don't have to ask permission anymore. Hi, I'm coming in. And I just enter the country. I want to be able to do that. I, won't go, I don't want them to have them stop me at the border. This is how we sign the word rights. I'll have the right to be there. It's my right to be there. Oh, you're right, you can come in. That's what I'm looking for. And my wife would be able to come to America, and she would come to the border there at customs, and they're like, well, let's see the paperwork first. No, I have a right to be here. Oh, well, yes, you do. You know that blue passport that you guys have here in America, the blue passport? It, theirs is red. I'm going to have to have two that I travel with all the time, a blue and a red. So, dual citizenship. But look at what this says. He says, now therefore you are no more. What is he saying here? No more. Before you were, but you're not anymore. From now on, as a saved, as a saved person, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, you are no more strangers. Heaven, God, the King of all, that's your Father. Before, we could not have entrance. You know, can I come in, please? Can you grant me entrance? No, you don't belong here, so um, no. You don't belong in heaven. No, you can't come. You're a, the, the, the devil, your father. This is a holy place. My family is perfect. Because of that, you can't come. You're not granted entrance because of your sins. I'm sorry, I cannot allow it. That was us before. But God has changed all of that with the death of Jesus Christ and his love for us. There's no more barriers. He doesn't want me, not that he wants to be mean, but he is holy. He is perfect. And so nothing that defile it, no sin, could come in. 
You must have the passport, guys. And the passport is a cross. His death on the cross that take care of sin. And because of that, I now have entrance. I am no more a stranger. I am not a foreigner. I'm not an outsider anymore. I'm a fellow citizen with the saints. You're a Christian. I'm a Christian. Both of us are. We're from the same country. Now also look at, the, look at what it says here. And we are of the household of God. You're a Christian. I'm a Christian. We are from the same household, same family. That's what that is saying there to us. That all over this world, where they name your name, all believers in Jesus Christ, he has given us the power to become the sons of God. Sons of God. That's my father now. In the book of John, Jesus rebukes the people there, the Pharisees. He rebukes them because they thought, you know, he is our father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's our father. And Jesus rebukes them and says, he says, you are of your father, the devil. The sinners, because of your sin, when we believe in him, the way becomes open to us. We join the family of God. And, I like that it says that, and are built upon the foundation. The foundation is solid, it's strong, it's unmovable. The foundation of the apostles, Peter, Paul, those guys, James, those guys, apostles, who wants to travel and preach, and the prophets, John the Baptist, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, Daniel, the different men of God that prophesied. That is our foundation. They're the ones by whom we have this book. And my life can be built upon it as a foundation. Now because of that, God has granted men his word in order that they can prophesy and I can stand on that foundation. Look at what else it says. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The foundation, if you know what a foundation looks like, you normally have it laid out. <clears throat> and there is usually one rock that supports the entire foundation. And that's Jesus Christ. He's the support of our foundation. In John 1, it speaks of this. What does it say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, I'll do it in English here, was with God, and the Word was God. What does that mean to you? In the beginning, God was there. The Word was there. Who's the Word? Who was that? That's Jesus Christ, guys. God and the Word was there. They were coexisting, one and, the, one and the same. That's where we get the word Trinity from. Easy for us, it's not easy for us to understand, but that's what it says. The God and the Father, the Father and the Son had fellowship and they are one. Think about it. That's what it says here, that Jesus himself gave us his word. He is the living word of God. God spoke to us through him. That's what this says. And he gave us his word in written form. Is your word, is your life based on this? Are you standing on the word? Yes or no? I hope so. Having faith in Jesus Christ, we can have because of this book. We've not seen him, but this book tells us of him. 
I believe in God and His creation and all that He did, the world in seven days. That's what I get it from this book. All that took place, every story that I know to be true comes from this book. God created you. He created me. And I showed you the video this morning. This dead gentleman made that video. Put the verses in Spanish. One of the verses says, You knew me in my mother's womb. You saw me since I was there. You created me. You fashioned me. That's the power of God. He made you and he made me. And since the beginning of time, he's had a plan for us, for our lives. We can be successful, each one of us can, if we stand on the foundation that is God. Look at what it says here. In whom, God, all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom, again it says here, ye also are builded together, a habitation of God through the Spirit. God is doing something with you and me. Our lives are being, quote, unquote, built and fit together. So that we end up as a building. That's our lives gives honor to God. And that means that my life, since the beginning of time, Adam, Eve, all of that, that was to glorify Him. And I need to do the same. I need to give glory to Him because of my life. What about your life? What type of goals do you have? Do you have the goal to be, to glorify God? Have you founded your life upon this book? I know there are a lot of people out there, I mean, different goals are fine. That's fine. But do not forget that God has accepted you into His town, His country, His family. He has adopted you and I. We are His building. He's the one that fit us together into this temple. And He's the one that has a plan for us. Now which one is better, guys? Your plan or His plan? Which is better? We can answer, come on. His plan. His plan. I mean, I mean, it's true. When you look at Matthew 7, Verse 24, let's jump over there. This is Matthew 7, 24. You know the story. This is a good example of what we're talking about here. Jesus is saying, this is guys, he's got the multitude there with him. Remember, Pastor spoke of this this morning about the blessings, the Beatitudes. This is right before that. Jesus told the people there, the multitudes, he's speaking to them. And they have paid, paid attention and they're pondering what he told them. And then once he was finished with them, he said, let me tell you something. And this is what he told them. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, which means you have to obey, I would liken him unto a wise man, a wise man. The book of Proverbs, there's a lot of, of wisdom in there, and how to be a wise man. A wise man who built his house on a rock, something that was solid. I saw a video one time of this story. This person, they had a house built and then the rain started, and the wind started to blow, just kind of like a hurricane, and some of you have experienced that. <laughs> Hurricanes, I, I, I don't like that. You know, you, you don't like I mean, being part of that. It's better to move out of its way. When you have hurricanes coming through, it's better to move out of the way, but then when you come back, there's usually destruction that you have to repair. So a lot of times they'll take wood and they'll water up everything, 
the windows and all of that has to be boarded up here tight to be careful. You don't leave things outside to be blowing around because they can, you know, hit the house. That's hurricane. But what it's saying here, if you and I will take heed to the things of God and obey Him, it says here that we are likened unto a man that built a house on a rock. I mean, Lord, I obeyed you. The rain is going to come still, even if you obey. But, you know, Lord, I, I, I go to church, and I did what you said for me to do. Surely life is going to be easy, right? No, the rain is still going to come. Our world today has problems. Some of you have experienced some of these things firsthand. I am good. I obey. The rain is still going to come. Problems are still going to come. It says the rain descended and the floods came. I mean, have you ever seen a flood come through? And it says the wind blew and beat upon that house. However, look at what it says. It fell not. The house did not fall. That's your life, like this house. Life, your life, my life, if we apply the word of God, we come to church and we learn the word of God, apply it to our lives, it says here, I mean, my future, guys, really? My life, I have to say no to things, drink, no, I'm not going to drink anything that I'm not supposed to. You list the name of sins. It tells us exactly what they are in the scripture. You can go down the list. The list. Jealousy. No, no, I'm going to say no to that. I can make a choice with all of this stuff. But if I take heed and obey the things of God, my life can be strong. I cannot fall. Problems are going to come, yes. There are times I'm going to be hurt, yes. I'll go to him, but I'll make it through, through the help of God, through his failing, never failing me. I'll not fail because he won't fail. I'll be solid at this house. <clears throat> Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. You know the word fool, the word foolish shows up all the time. I'm sorry, it's a powerful word. I'm using my Peruvian signs, I apologize. It's a very, very powerful word. What it means is, God, no, I, I really don't believe in you. No, 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 I, I don't think I'm going to take heed to what you're saying. No, I don't like what you said. God calls us a fool when we do that. And we are going to fail. You say, you know, I don't want to come to church. You know, well, I'll come, okay. Okay, uh, I, I learned something there, yeah. Okay. But God doesn't understand my situation. That doesn't apply to me. I can't do that. I can't do what he's asking us to do. You know, but we said, you know, I can't go to church because I work. I, I just have to work. So I can't go to church. I mean, scriptures say that going to church is important, but you, know, you don't understand my situation, because I do not work. <coughs> so I can't go to church. Is it my decision to make, or am I going to obey what he has to say? Sometimes he says, you know, well, you know, you know, there's that girl that you like, or that guy that you like, well, they're not saying, but, um, uh, well, you know, I like her, but you don't understand. I love that person. You don't understand what they do for me, how I feel around them. I mean, just that smile lightens my day. Wait a minute, guys. What do you think is going to happen in the future? God has already warned us in his word, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It says that. Saved with unsaved. It actually says that, well, no, 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 you see, um, uh, you really don't understand 
my situation, I know it doesn't really mean that. I'm the exception to the rule. No, this is what it says. Are you going to obey it or not? <coughs> Jesus says, when you don't, you're a foolish man. You like that man that built his house on sand. Have you ever gone to the beach? Yes, I, I learned this word yesterday. <coughs> this used to be my sign for beach, but I learned this sign yesterday. So you go to the beach and you dig the hole, you know, you build up your castle or whatever you're doing on the beach, and you have a moat that goes around it, and so there you have a nice castle. In Peru, um, this sign means mischievous, like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. And so you mess it up a little bit. So you have a little part of the building or the sand structure that is caving away. So you take your foot and you sweep it out. And then the whole building falls very easily. <coughs> Why is that? Because the foundation is not strong. That can be applied to you and I. It says, and, this is verse 28, and it came to pass that when Jesus ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In your life, let me ask you, are you honoring and obeying him as the authority? Or do you say, you know, this is my life, this is my choice? When we talk about Miss Kim's niece, being pregnant and having this pray to the Lord. Okay, well, you know, she can abort the baby. Surely it'll be all right. You know, the health of the mom is surely more important. You know, she needs the chemo right now, so we need to go ahead and abort the baby. You know, doctors today will say that. People today say that. We had one situation in, in Peru, and they're like, man, you should have, been, you should have aborted the baby. And it's the same thing. My brother, this is his sign name, Man, should have aborted the baby. Have you heard people say things like that before? Because they want the perfect child? You know, this is not what I want. I want something else. No, they're not perfect. Before the baby, baby is born, you do an ultrasound, and if they see something wrong with the baby, they abort it. It's not right. It's not perfect. People say, it's my life, it's my choice. But what does God say? What does the Word say? I know many pastors today, guys, that have fallen into sin, hurt the church. You, you know the stories. Different, well, and it's not just one or two. It's quite a list. The same thing happens in Peru. Oh, this happens. This person has fallen into sin. Why is that? Because they made the decision and said, this is my choice. Lust. I decide I'm going to do this. I want that. But God, you said this, but I want this. And often you say that it's your, okay, good, you do it. But you have to make the decide decision if you're going to be on the rock or if you're going to take that weakness as temporary as it is, kind of like the beach, and that sand, you know, palm trees. It's beautiful. You go to Florida, you see it all the time. They have these beautiful palm trees. But if the foundation where you build is not strong, eventually the waves are going to come in. And so take your house with it. There it goes. 
floating down the river, down the beach, because they did not have the proper foundation. These are for some funny stories, yes, but guys, so many people in, I mean, Peru and here. There's a Spanish word means, I guess, stupid, tonto, tonto. And you should be, I mean, you know truth. You say there are women, you knew what was right. You knew that this was sin. You knew that you had a choice to do that or honor God. Why would you have done that? Why would you not obey God? Why would you not want to have a life that is blessed? God blesses. Where do, where do blessings come from? They come from Him. But they come when we obey Him. <coughs> If you have an unsaved person and a Christian, you know that Christians can get discouraged too. They can go away from God. They can not obey. God does not bless that. And then we turn around, we obey Him. We do what we're supposed to and He blesses us. The Word of God is so clear on that. If you want success, if you want peace, if you want to be holy, if you want to be happy, then you got to follow what it says. If not, you're going to end up in trouble. you got to check your foundation. Take him with you. Hold his hand. You know the story of Jesus walking on the beach. And, you know, you're walking along, and I'm there, and Jesus is there. The story of footprints. And then at some point, you look back, and you see, wait a minute. Two footprints, two footprints, okay, two footprints, two footprints, good, good. But there's a little place down there where I don't see two footprints anymore. I don't. I just see one. I said, Jesus, Jesus, did you leave me alone during that time? Was I alone? I only see one set of footprints in the sand. Before there was two, I knew you were with me. And Jesus said, I love you so much. And during this period right here in your life, you see that? That was a difficult time for you. And so what I did, I, I carried you during that time. That's why you only see one set of footprints in the sand. Is there a support to us, guys? Beautiful story. But that's our life sometimes. Life gets hard. But I'm here to encourage you today that God knows He loves you. Make sure, though, that you're obeying His commandments. Make sure that you're following what He has asked you to do. Make sure that you trust in Him. And if you do that, He promised He'll be there to carry you. It doesn't matter what storm comes. It doesn't matter how hard it beats on your life. He is there to support you all the way. Don't give up. Well, you know, I'm panicking and I'm, I'm, I'm just made one bad decision, so I'm going to quit. And I just have to, I can't, I can't go on. And so you give up on God. That's foolish. Trust Him. Who knows better? Do you know better? Or does He know better? I'd like to close at this time, and I just thank you so much for your attention. Let's close with a word of prayer. Please stand if you would mind. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. And so much so we want to thank you. Thank you for your word. It's used to teach us and without it, we would know absolutely nothing. Lord, you've given us so, given us so many blessings. Help us to obey you. Help us to honor you with our lives. We want our lives to be a beautiful testimony of who you are. We ask God that you bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen.